Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is on a mission to help women and people of color navigate the world of work, make more money, and position themselves as industry leading experts. And today she is here to help all of us to do the same. Please welcome career and leadership coach Kimberly B. Cummings. Yay. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We are ready to be informed, but I'm going to break down some stats here, so I'll refer to to my card here, uh, according to a Nielsen survey, 18% of the U.S. population, women of color, represent only 4% of C-level positions in 2018, mm -hmm. falling below white men and white women. So mm. white men at 68% and white women at 19%. Um, does graduating <laughs> from a prestigious college uh, actually help in business? The crazy thing is that studies show that it doesn't help. I didn't think wow. so. Wow. Like, that even if you came from Harvard or Yale, you're still on the same playing field as a minority. I think the issue really, we have to think about how to position ourselves as leaders in the workplace, mm -hmm. but on the company side, they also have to work on diversity and inclusion practices. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you recruit and retain yeah. diverse professionals right. and put them in positions to advance? Why 4% for us, though? Why just 4%? I think it's it's really we have to work on the positioning part. Mm -hmm. Positioning, of course, is discrimination and bias. Yes, mm -hmm. but we have to work on the positioning too. My goodness, this is discouraging. Yes, um, considering we work very hard, we, we we teach our children to work very hard in school to be able to get into these prestigious colleges yes. and universities, and the fact that that doesn't matter mm -hmm. when they get out is absolutely. That just got on my nerve. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie to the people. That just right. really got on my nerve right. Right, just right then. But let's talk but, about women of color and, and, and how they are with their jobs. Um, okay. Or Ms. Ms. Quadri has something. Well, I was just going to say really quickly, but I know it got on your nerve, but I'm really happy to kind of hear that. So for people who have attended HBCUs and schools who are not in the big yes, the same it's field. like, hey, listen, let's run Go the race. Let's yeah. see you. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 So We're all on the that. same playing field. That's yeah. what she just that's stated. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and that's a good point, Ms. Yes, Quadri. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, you did your thing on the brain. Because actually, <laughs> actually, that is another incentive to say, hey, it, go to the HBCU. Right. Get to the HBCU, mm -hmm. same education, same opportunities. And yes. you can still have a seat at the table. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I it, the, the table. problem is that we're not learning how to be professionals in school. Mm. So I think that's why the playing field is equal. There's, there's classes, there's career centers, but you're learning how to go to school. You're learning how to yeah. take tests. You're not learning what is it like to be a professional I, I, in the I workplace. Think, I also think during that time of being in college, it's very important to establish that resume as a leader. Yes. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So yeah. I and think internships as well. It, Exactly, mm -hmm. and to perform well in those internships, yeah. internships, because then that will uh, pretty much set you outside of the realm mm -hmm. of what exactly. one is thinking yeah. of you, yeah. or how they're perceiving you. The and how to create yeah. your resume, yes. exactly. Because we're not too. really taught that in college as well. There you go. So, um, so let's talk about how satisfied women of color are, uh, how women of color are on the job mm -hmm. and with their jobs. So the crazy thing is that studies show that we are actually satisfied with the work that we do. Yeah. We're proud mm. of the work that we do. We are excited about our industries, mm -hmm. but what we're not excited about is the opportunity for advancement. Yeah, there's that, no upward mobility. Exactly. Wow. Like there's not a clear path or we're not being promoted appropriately, so we end up leaving and just not being excited about our work. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it is very discouraging. How many times have you seen someone be promoted over you who doesn't do the work that yes, you do indeed. at all? I've seen that a lot. Absolutely. Honestly, you know, where yes. someone is kind of just riding the wave, but yet and still they fit the bill, whether if, if it's their, you know, nationality mm -hmm. or, you know, their relationships that they have within the organization. But they and, don't, but they, their but work ethic is not even exactly. comparable. Yeah. At yeah. all. Yes. At all. Yes. And I've seen that. Yes, yeah. yes. Which my is sister complain about it yeah. a lot. Yeah. Especially yeah. my oldest mm -hmm. sister who's in nursing, in mm -hmm. the nursing field. She said it takes place a lot in the nursing field. Wow. Yeah. It does. It All deep. right. So I just want to talk a little bit about um, the roles of leadership uh, in, 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 um, with African American women. Um, how can we change the ties and how can we become more of a visible uh, component in, in the executive arena? Mm -hmm. So I was watching yesterday, okay. of course, to make sure I prepared for today, mm -hmm. and y'all talked about the CFOs. Studies show that when you are a senior level executive as a woman, you do better. Like there is actually advancement opportunities there, not advancement, but you have a financial impact mm -hmm. on the organization. So I think it's when you're able to break through the door, they say that 
females do better because we have more pressure. Mm. But use that to your advantage and always use qualitative and quantitative metrics to talk about the work that you do. It is so important to quantify. So it's, it's we have to, we've got to work it well, yes. then we got to sell ourselves, then we're responsible for opening the door for another sister to have a seat. So much pressure mm -hmm. is. is on the black woman. It, will it, it always be like this? Because we're having the same conversations <sighs> over and over again, and it's like, when are we gonna, when is it gonna be okay for us to just do a good dang job. Mm. I wish I had an answer. And be seen yeah. for that job, you exactly. know, instead of like, oh, she's amazing, but you know she's minority, so we can't really, mm. you know, I owe the favor to Jeff over here, you know, and you know, mm. he's been waiting on it, but Jeff hadn't, you know, uh, made any real contributions to the company. Mm. So mm. how do you do that? And also tell me, or help to explain, what are some of the most pertinent relationships that we need as African-American women to be cultivating in helping us kind of mm. climb that ladder in the corporate arena. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the missing question. piece. Why? I think that ties everything together. Mm -hmm. We need mentors and we need sponsors. So mentors are that person who you can come to day to day. You can walk in and ask, hey, my boss just said this. How do I have a great conversation about this later? How do I prepare for my performance appraisal? Mm -hmm. But the key point that a lot of us are missing are sponsors. Mm -hmm. And sponsors the people who can pick you up from where you are and bring you to where you'd like to be. Because mm -hmm. they have the influence and the power to lift you up. Right. Essentially, we talk about a lot of our peers have that. That's why sometimes Jim got promoted instead. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that we're able to that navigate that. we have someone that. in the room who's right. speaking exactly. on our And that yeah. person necessarily doesn't have to be a person of color. You no. just need yeah, yeah, someone yeah. to have, you need, we mm -hmm. need allies People. everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness. Is, is this why you talk about proactively positioning yourself? Is that yes. what that, is that what you mean when you say proactively positioning yourself and others? Yes, 100%. Yeah. When you're looking at your career so many times, especially with minority communities, we believe that I have my resume, and that's all I need, a resume, and I'll apply to jobs and I will get it, but there's so much more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to actively find mentors, teachers, coaches, be at the events, position yourself as a leader, get on higher level projects, and that's how you position yourself for advancement. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and you have a new, new book for people of color to kind of formulate their own strategy. Talk to us a little bit about that before we let you go. I like yes, it. Yes, no, I'm so excited. So my book will be coming out in June 2020. Yes. Come on, girls. Next Move, Best Move. And it's about strategy. I think the conversations we're having today are amazing, but we need to have a body of work that teaches you how to navigate the world of work yeah. so you can do it on your own. Not everyone can hire me or another career coach or have that sponsor, so the book is going to take you through my process yes. of putting yourself first in your career and creating opportunities for yourself. Well, thank you so Getting much. Getting to know yeah. those decision yes. makers. Yes. You know, I exactly. think that's very that's, important. That's very yeah. important. Well, thank yeah. you so much for all this amazing, yes. valuable information for okay. career coaching, workbooks, and all things Kimberly. Please go to her website, manifestyourself.com. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.